the year is flying by and now it's time to do some September horoscopes and predictions. That's what I do today. Hello everybody, I'm Tina Chaudhary. Welcome to my channel and a very warm namaste. Aham Brahmasmi before I move forward with talking about September horoscopes and predictions, I'm going to do my most favorite thing, which I do on every one of my monthly predictions, which is wish everybody that has a birthday in the month of September a very, very happy birthday. May this new year bring you lots of success, prosperity, but above all, bring you lots of happiness and good health. That's the most important thing. Now, one of the things I'm going to ask you to do is on your birthday, come out and uh, make sure that the first thing you do is get the blessings off the sun. So come out early in the morning um, and ask the sun to give you your blessings. And the reason for that is on your birthday, the sun comes back to the position that it was on the day they were, uh, that you were born. That's why it's called a solar return. So. You want to come out and ask the sun to give you the blessings the day it gave you the day you were born don't forget to ask for the blessings of your parents on that day most special people in your life that brought you into this world if they're still in your life make sure you get their blessings and even if they're not in your life you can still reach into this energy and ask for their blessings but i will certainly ask my divine to bless all of those people that have September birthdays. Now there's one person, she asked me to mention her so I can wish her a happy birthday and her name is Sarah Chongo. So happy birthday, Sarah Chongo for September. If you want me to mention your birthday for October, you can send it in the comments also on this video. Before I even move on to talking about planets and the planetary events of September, if you don't know what your ascendant or your lagna or your first house a zodiac sign is based on Vedic uh, astrology calculations, I have a link in my description box. So you can click that link, you can enter your birth details and it will give you the ascendant sign or the zodiac sign in the first house. And then that's the uh, zodiac sign you need to check for your prediction. So don't listen to the wrong sign, please. And then tell me that it doesn't work. So make sure you're listening to the correct zodiac sign predictions. Now, a lot of you in the past have said, uh, you know, it's very different from the Western astrology sign that you're used to thinking of yourself. Yes, of course, it's going to be different. Don't worry about the fact that it's different. If you're going to listen to these predictions, you're just going to have to follow that sign. In one of my future videos, I will talk about why there's differences and why all these signs are so different uh, based on Vedic astrology as opposed to the Western astrology and the signs that you know we're used to believing ourselves to be. So now let's take a look at all the planetary um, transits and positions for the month of September and what's going to impact us the most. So let's see what happens first. Um, the first thing that's going to happen on September 3rd is that Jupiter is going to start its retrograde motion. I made a video on that already. A lot of you may not have seen it already. If you haven't seen it, make sure you watch it because the predictions I make on this video um, haven't really included the predictions related specifically to the Jupiter retrograde um, uh, transit. So I'll add a link to that video. Make sure you click it and watch it. It's an extremely important transit. It impacts all of us. So make sure you watch that video in conjunction with the predictions that I'm going to do for September in this video. Then the next thing on the next day, Venus is starts its direct motion. It's in Cancer and it's retrograde right now as we speak. It's disturbing everybody's relationships. We know that. It's also having giving us a very challenging relationship with our finances. That's the two things Venus rules is our relationships and finances. So it's definitely giving us a lot of confusion and disturbance in those two areas. Thankfully, it starts its direct motion the next day after Jupiter uh, starts its retrograde motion. That's, a, that's actually a good thing. We don't want both of them retrograding at the same time. So that's a good thing. Then um, on uh, September 14th, Mercury is going to start its direct motion. It's definitely retrograde season because as we speak right now, Mercury is retrograding. And so it started its retrograde motion in Virgo uh, on August 20th and now until September 14th it's going to retrograde but thank God on um, uh, September 14th 
it starts to become direct. M Mercury retrogrades are pretty impactful to all of us. They, they do strange things like miscommunication in relationships. They actually also impact our electronic devices. A lot of times, you know, we have trouble with our electronic devices during a Mercury retrograde. So make sure you're, you know, saving all your data and stuff like that. And also protecting your electronic devices like phones, laptops, computers, and things like that. Also make sure that you're communicating until that time, you're watching your communication very carefully. There's no miscommunications between relationships. Mercury retrograde is it happens frequently, but it's quite damaging, you know, I I eventful. It's pretty damaging. <laughs> it causes a lot of damage in relationships and, and also causes a lot of inaccuracies in our work when we're working, especially when we work with a lot of details. It can cause some inaccuracies too, so watch for that until September 14th. Then the last thing that happens is on September 17th, the sun transits. It's right now in its own house, enjoying staying in Leo, but then on September 17th, it goes into Virgo. So that's the last thing that happens. Now there's two very important things that are also going to happen in um, September. Now until last uh, last month, uh, Saturn uh, and Mars were looking at aspecting each other, which was a pretty disturbing aspect. So um, that thankfully is over. So because Mars is now in Virgo and it doesn't, Saturn doesn't aspect it anymore. But the one thing that's going to start happening is that because Mars is in Virgo and um, Jupiter and Rahu are in Aries, now Mars is going to be aspecting the Jupiter-Rahu conjunction. That's probably not a very good thing to happen because Mars aspects is always a little fiery aspect. So it's Mars is a, is a you know, malefic planet. So the aspect of Mars is usually not a very good aspect, especially when it's on a benefic planet like uh, Jupiter. One of the most important things that I do want to point out is that now in September, a lot of the uh, auspicious celebrations for the Hindus uh, or the people that follow the Sanatan Dharma will now start. So there's two very important things start in September. I'll mention those for those people that are interested in, you know, using that, utilizing that energy for themselves. It's, it's, this is very good energy. So I really do want to talk about that. So on um, the night of uh, September 6th, or which would be the midnight of September 6th, morning of September 7th, is Krishna Janmashtami, the birth of Lord Krishna. So people that celebrate it can do that. Now, what if you're not a Hindu and you, you don't really celebrate Krishna Janmashtami? You can use that night to actually use that energy. That It's a very powerful energy at that night, midnight, of uh, between June, uh, September 6th and 7th. Uh, you can use that energy in a very powerful way. You can do meditation. You can, if you are a tarot reader or if you're a healer, you can do lots of meditation. You can uh, purify your cards if you purify your crystals if you have all those kind of things. So you, everybody can utilize that beautiful energy. Of course, if you're a Hindu, you can certainly do your prayers and meditation for Krishna at that time. The other thing that also is in September is on September uh, 18th, which is the Ganesh Chaturthi. So that's the birth of uh, Lord Ganesh. So I wasn't kidding when I said that September is a very auspicious month for the Hindus. So uh, Ganesh Chaturthi starts on um, September 18th. This is the birth of uh, Lord Ganesha. Now, Lord Ganesha for the Hindus is considered the uh, uh, Lord of Prosperity. And he's worshipped when anything new is start. So he blesses. He's the Lord of all blessings. So uh, for, of course, the Hindus that celebra uh, celebrate uh, Ganesh Chaturthi, obviously it's a wonderful time. But for the people that are not of the Hindu faith, I have a lot of viewers that don't follow the Hindu faith, which is fine. But what, what can they do? Now, um, that day is very, very potent, also has a very potent energy within that universe because, you know, it's the start of prosperity. It's the start of uh, positive energy within that universe. Again, you can use it for a meditation. You can also use it to do your own prayers. So whether you follow the Islamic faith, whether you follow the Christian faith, you can certainly f do your own prayers because this energy is very, very positive in the universe. So you can certainly use that day to do your own prayers to do your own manifestation so that day 
uh, the uh, energy of manifestation is very strong because Lord Ganesha is said to be the giver of positive things. So if you want to start manifestations or you want to do anything to do with man manifestations, you can certainly do that on uh, September 18th, which, which is Ganesh Chaturthi. Of course, the Hindus celebrate Ganesh Chaturthi with lots of excitement, so they can certainly do that. Now, the last thing that happens in September is on September 29th when the Pitrupak starts, which is the, uh, a lot of people call it the Shrad, which is the offering to the deceased um, ancestors. I will make a separate video on that because that is an extremely powerful time that I believe um, not only the Hindus but all the other people should also do that because it has a lot of astrological significance. So um, people that have certain combinations in their birth charts, it's very important for them to do that. I will make a separate video on that. It's still some time away, so I will certainly find some time to make a video on that. So definitely September, very powerful month, very strong energy in the universe. And so make a note of these dates if you want to do, you know, all uh, harness this energy and bring it into your life. I just want to make one comment before I actually go into the predictions part of the video is that um, there's a lot of retrograde uh, planets right now, Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, Venus, uh, almost everybody's retrograding <laughs> except for Mars. And R Rahu Ketu are getting ready to uh, change or transit into the next sign. So they're already getting the energy of two different zodiacs. So it's not really accurate if you just listen to the predictions that I'm making in my September videos. You need to combine it with the predictions that I've made for in the retrograde videos that I've made. I made a video on Saturn going retrograde, Jupiter being retrograde. So you might want to go back to those videos on the retrogrades of Jupiter and Saturn and listen to those as well and then combine it with the predictions I make in September. I'll uh, definitely attach the links for both the videos in my description box. I move on to predictions now but if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel. Also this video very important make sure you sp uh, share it with friends and family. Aries for September. Aries, your ascendant Lord Mars is in the sixth house, and now it will aspect the ninth house, twelfth house, and the first house. So this is good news because now it will no longer be aspected by Saturn, which it was being previously. So this is going to be an expensive time for you, as well as uh, the possibility of some long distance travel. As far as your career is concerned, there's some moderate growth and gradual progress. So you may have to wait for the large success. But because your ascendant Lord Mars is in the sixth house, the sixth house also represents your workplace and your daily schedule. So you will be very disciplined in your work and you will be able to put in a good amount of hard work. There's an excellent chance of travel this month, like I mentioned, and this could also be foreign travel as well as travel for learning or educational purposes. If that is a possibility and if that opportunity does come up, uh, make sure that you take um, full advantage of it because it's going to have very favorable uh, results. It's also possible that some Aries travel for religious or uh, spiritual purposes. Now, as far as financial situation in September is concerned, your expenses could be a little bit on the higher side, like I mentioned, because Mars does aspect the 12th house, which is the house of expenses and losses. So be very cautious about overextending uh, your expenses. Uh, make sure you don't take on loans that are very high or ex overextend your credit card or debt situations. The chance of purchasing expensive uh, items or large items is very high at this time. You might be very tempted to do, uh, do that. So just think before you spend. Some Aries may also be uh, tempted to spend on real estate or buy real estate at this time. Just think before you rush into anything impulsively. And so the same caution applies to if you're tempted to buy a vehicle or a car. Just think before you do it. Income is moderate this month, and for business owners, profits are so-so. They're not very high, they're not very low either, just moderate as well. As far as health is concerned, it remains okay. It's nothing to be concerned about. Usually Mars 
in the sixth house gives very good recovery and good energy to um, you know battle against any diseases or any health issues that come up so there's nothing to be concerned about as far as health is concerned the only one thing is because of the placement of mercury so if there's Aries people that have any skin related issues they might experience a little bit of that but nothing to be concerned about now as far as love and relationships are concerned that needs to be nurtured because Venus has been in a challenge situation for the last couple of months. It's still going to be in a challenge situation. So, um, and it's going to be in the fourth house, which is your domestic peace, mental happiness. So, uh, you need to take care of your uh, love relationships. You need to be very cautious about how you handle um, all your love relationships, whether they're marital or love relationships. Um, what happens with Mars being in the fourth house is that yeah, there's feelings of anger as well as um, an uncontrolled ego. So make sure you manage anger and ego in love relationships. Otherwise, it could be damaging to your relationships. And there's one more thing you need to consider because Mars does uh, aspect the ninth house, which is uh, the ninth house is, represents the father. So if you're lucky enough to have your father in your life, make sure you maintain a very cordial relationship with your father and take good care of his health at this time as well and don't don't get into conflicts with him for students this is a very very favorable powerful month so make sure you put in good hard work the first part of the month is much more favorable if you're going to take competitive tests or exams so work hard it's a favorable month a favorable month for you taurus for september Taurus, your ascendant Lord Venus has been really troubled for the last few months. It was in Cancer and then it had to cross the Gandant point between Cancer and Leo, come into Leo, and now it's retrograde. And now, unfortunately, it'll have to cross that Gandant position again at the end of, end of September. So it's kind of been, you know, back and forth a little bit. And so, um, you know, all this back and forth that it's been doing, uh, transit has really impacted Taurus mentally and emotionally. So Taurians have experienced all kinds of different impacts. They could have relationship challenges over the last few months or some confusion regarding, you know, decision making in large aspects of their life. It could be career related aspects. Um, also, some Taurus I know have experienced some breakups as well and tension in relationships. So now they can hope to experience some improvement after September 13th when Venus finally starts to go direct and a little bit of tension towards the end of the month when it crosses the Gandant but a complete improvement after October so things start to look a little better for Taurians if this whole back and forth transit of Venus has troubled them in several different ways expect that this month gets a little better so as far as career is concerned, Taurus has had a very heavy workload. And so this month they can expect some good recognition of their past efforts, especially from their seniors. They may get good visibility and they can be, you know, recognized in a very positive manner. So there could be chances of sudden success as well as job changes for some Taurus. Now for some, these jo job changes could even mean um, bring about some relocation. So be prepared for that. And if that does happen, by all means, go for it. Think through it, but go for it. This could be very positive for you guys. Uh, financially, this is a very positive month also. Uh, your financial planning could give you very positive results. So whatever you've planned um, from a financial perspective in the past, you could see some favorable results of that this month. Um, Taurus has had high expenses because of the fact that Jupiter and Rahu have been in the 12th house. The 12th house is one of expenses and losses. So Taurus has had high expenses. But this month, there are chances of increase in income as well. So even though the expenses may stay you know, high unless you're managing them really well, but your income really has good chance of being high this month. So um, also, there's a chance to expect some unearned income you know is possible this month unearned income means if you were looking for a settlement of any insurance or um, inheritance or a settlement from the government in any possible in any way then the settlement of that kind of financial is possible in this month there's also a possibility of good gains from anything foreign related so it could be 
getting a job with a foreign company, working with a foreign entity, uh, working with companies that are overseas. So it's a very good chance of that as well. Very profitable if that does happen. A lot of Torians may also be tempted to do real estate deals this month. There's a high chance of that. Um, and so they could either do buying or selling both of real estate. There's a very high probability of that Mercury, Venus, in the third fourth house high income and high expense so real estate deals may happen for a lot of Taurus people i do have a, a word of caution for Taurus, though is to think before making new investments or buying expensive items don't be impulsive with your purchases especially real estate so um just think through things before you rush into impulsive spending and lastly this is a very positive month for love life so if you're single and you're looking for somebody new this might be the month where you find someone so make sure you keep your eyes open and you try hard enough to find that someone special gemini for september gemini your center ruler uh, mercury will be out of retrograde early in the month and in the third house aspecting the ninth house of luck uh, it's also the house of spirituality and higher learning. So also both the third and the ninth house represent travel. So I think uh, Gemini's might do be doing some travel this month. The third house denotes the self-effort, courage and confidence to initiate new ventures. It also denotes self-effort. So Gemini might get new opportunities, new ideas for business, career and finance. Now, some Geminis may also get the opportunity to travel for educational purposes that will bring um, very favorable results in the long run. As far as career is concerned, there can be um, positive results this month, especially after mid-month, as long as you continue to make a very dedicated and sincere effort and work hard. Financially, Gemini has had a very positive streak due to the Ju uh, Jupiter and Rahu placement in the 11th house, the 11th house, a house of gains, wishes, and desires. Also social um, social life. But so this, you know, the positive impact of the 11th house continues. But now this month in uh, September, Mars is going to aspect the house of career. So it gets even better. So this is, it gets even more positive. So if Gemini didn't think it was positive enough, now it gets better. So use this positive uh, transit combination very wisely. Don't lose this opportunity. So this is what you have to do. You have to work hard and maintain very positive relationships at work. Produce good work so that nothing can stop you from achieving professional and financial success. So don't let this opportunity of the positive transits get wasted by you behaving badly or not getting what you want because you've not professionally behaved well. So make sure you do that. Sometimes Gemini suffers from bad communication. So make sure you don't communicate in a negative way. Make sure your communication is just A1 and that's how you can achieve this excellent financial professional success at this time. And above all, you need to continue to expand your skill set and keep learning, making, you know, make sure Jupiter's on your side. So you always keep learning new things. And that's the secret of Gemini, success and growth. There's also a possibility of investment or gains from the sale of real estate or from gains from real estate related. Like if you're a landlord, you might, you know, get gains from renting out your property. So there's gains from real estate also seen this month health is a much more improved this month in fact lots of gemini's may feel a sense of recovery and have more energy than previous the only guidance that i have for gemini is to be very careful about how you maintain your marital relationships as well as your professional relationships because of the position of mars you may have a tendency to get angry and very bossy and that could start fights and arguments at work at home as well so practice patience and understanding and of course your uh, communication style like i said needs to be managed very well as long as you can manage that this is could be an amazing month as you know as far as everything is concerned career and income finance this could be a very positive month as long as you can manage your communication style with everybody professional at home spouse loved ones just manage it don't don't start arguments don't be bossy it could be an amazing month for you students you're going to have to um 
uh, put a little more energy and try to focus your on your work there's going to be a lot of distraction you may actually have to even go back and rework on some of the um, work that you've already done you may have to do corrections also because of the fact that Venus is retrograde. Cancer for September? Cancer has uh, had a very tough run for the last several months and that's because they have Ashtama Shani and that means 8th house Saturn. So that means an overloaded work load as well lots of stress and pressure related to career and profession. And then lately a troubled Venus has been an in and out of their ascendant house in the second house, uh, which is indicating family pressure and stress. Um, this could also be indicative of financial burdens and challenges for cancer. Now I've said in several of my past videos that cancer will need to face and pass a very tough test in their careers at this time. And that phase continues. And the reason for that is that Saturn is going to stay in their eighth house for at least another year and a half. And some cancers might uh, face job changes. Now, most cancers will change, um, experience some job changes during this Ashtama Shani phase. When that happens for each cancer is dependent on your own birth chart. So uh, some of you could have that in September, but it could be any time during this two and a half year phase of the Ashtama Shani. Now, financially, September does not indicate too much of a change in the current situation. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to counsel a uh, cancer not to get into uh, too much of a loan or a debt situation. Although Mars aspect on the sixth house does indicate spending uh, money on the health of either yourself or it could even be for other family members. Uh, Mars has been in the third house indicates some challenges or uh, relationship issues with siblings and uh, your father's health. So take care of your father and don't get into a conflict with him or have any relationship issues with him. Don't get into a discussion with him, start conflicts with him at this time. There's also a very good possibility of travel uh, during this time to see family members at this time. The third house is indicative of travel, short, short distance travels. And then the third house uh, aspects the ninth house. So the ninth house um, you know, has traveled too. From an overall situation with relationships, um, I'm just going to say that it's probably more of the same. Whatever you've been experiencing, um, it's probably just going to stay the same. So uh, besides what I've mentioned for your siblings, which is Mars uh, in the third house, and then Sun moving in there, there's um, a possibility of conflicts with, uh, not conflicts, but I guess difference of opinion. Uh, with uh, siblings, with a father and some family members. So kind of, you know, um, stay clear of that. Um, cancer is a very emotional sign. So when the sun and Mars in the third house of communication, the third house is communication, there's a chance of angry words and hurt feelings. So prepare to manage your expectations of others manage your own communication and just toughen up a little uh, this month as far as um, you know relationships are concerned there could be some grievances i should say because you know others might say things um, that you don't like and then you know there's some sort of conflict in the within the family only because i know cancer is a very emotional sign and they a very sensitive sign gets hurt by the words of others mercury in the second house is is communication also so sometimes other people being sarcastic causes you to be sarcastic as well so kind of manage manage relationships this this month is on a positive note uh, venus does aspect the house of marriage so your marriage might be a little better than it's been lately your partner might be more loving more supportive and understanding of you so enjoy that time as far as students are concerned, um, you're going to have lots of great energy, drive, and focus this month to perform well. So use it to your advantage and work hard. So, uh, you know, you benefit from this. Leo for September. Leo, your ascendant Lord Sun is in your first house for the first half of the month. And then it transits to the second house after mid-month. Uh, Mercury is in your ascendant house or the first house this month. So lots and lots of energy that's impacting Leo in September. Now for you, Mercury rules both your income and finance houses. So this month, it's all about finance for you. And of course, this is a very positive month as far as finance is concerned. 
Um, also, the good thing that's going on for you is that Jupiter is already blessing the ascendant house of the first house. It's kind of blessing you at a physical level as well from the ninth house. It's aspecting the first house. So you're receiving those blessings. So I think that this might be a very financially positive time for Leo's. You may also get good opportunities to earn more income, starting new things, making new investments and initiating any financial planning. So all these activities could have very favorable results in September. Also, the chance of increasing in savings is, is very possible. And for business owners, it could be a profitable month as well. So very positive month uh, as far as finance is concerned. So use this time wisely, you know, to manage your finances, focus on savings and investments rather than spending. Now, Venus is in the 12th house, which is the house of spending. So the temptation to spend is going to be extremely high. So I'm just giving you the guidance now that even though you will be very tempted to spend more because you know your income or you may be getting some good finances or somewhere uh, resist that temptation to spend and, and and rather save it so this month it's a little bit of income good income i should say and then of course the temptation to spend is also going to be there it's up to you what you want to you know focus on as far as career is concerned um Leos can expect raises, recognition, and even promotions in the profession. Now, just remember one thing, that you're very visible to your seniors. So be very presentable, be on your toes, and don't make any mistakes uh, in the workplace. Because you're just going to be noticed. So whether if you do well, that's going to be noticed. If you're not so doing so well, uh, that's going to be noticed as well. So the one guidance I have is to manage your communication in the workplace for you because uh, Venus is retrograde for a part of the month and it's in the 12th house. So um, it can damage some relationships at work. Um, you know, it, the possibility is there. So maintain your behavior, your performance, like I said, in your workplace. Um, and um, you could do really, really well as far as career is concerned. Now, the fact that Venus is in the 12th house also means that if you have a chance to work uh, in your career, work with overseas companies, foreign entities, or anything to do with you know foreign or over overseas um, affiliates, it's a wonderful time for that. It's going to be extremely, extremely profitable. So chance to expand into the overseas markets or work with you know multinational companies it's an excellent excellent time to do that also this 12th house venus might give travel uh, to some leo so this travel could be long distance or foreign travel and it could relate to your career so some leos will travel long distance uh, for their career health for leos is good you have nothing to worry about this month everything seems pretty good and so the only concern that i do have is the ongoing one which i've had because of saturn being in the seventh house of marriage is the marital relationships may continue to have some challenges minor challenges nothing to be concerned about certainly and these uh, this month it could be due to communication style a uh, second house mars it gives you a bit of aggressive speech so try your best to stay pleasant don't start conflicts with your spouse or your, any family members and the mars communication style does make a person very bossy so um and for students this is an ec excellent time for you as well virgo for september Virgo, your ascendant ruler Mercury is in the 12th house and the 12th house indicates expenses and losses and it's also retrograde for the first few days of the month. So essentially this means it's an expensive month for you. There could even be some expenses um, from past that come up now that you probably didn't know about in the past or maybe didn't handle or something to do with the past that comes up now. At the same time, there are prospects of very good income and gains as well because Venus is in the 11th house. 11th house is of gains. Venus also rules your financial house. So um, there's a very good chance. It's a good, it's a good financial month as well. So basically I'm saying that even though you have good gains and income, it may actually get spent very easily if you're not careful about how you handle it. So be very cautious about your monetary choices and decisions at this time. Be very cautious about how you handle your money.
As far as your career is concerned, it's a status quo month. Although you will be expected to work very hard and make a lot of extra effort, you will be able to um, fulfill all your responsibilities and have lots of energy as well because Mars in the first house gives good vitality and energy. So you have nothing to worry about. You'll do lots of work, but you probably will do it pretty easily. After mid-month, the sun moves into your ascendant house a house as well and that puts a lot of visibility on you so as far as your career is concerned you're going to become very visible people will sit up and take notice of you and so the spotlight comes on you so make sure whatever it is that you're doing is absolutely perfect because you're going to be noticed by your seniors so that might be a time for some good recognition or some promotions or rewards if you were waiting for that it's an excellent time for that as far as health is concerned, Mars in the first house does give uh, good energy, recovery, and vitality. You may also have a, a feeling, a sense of agitation and frustration, which may actually be for no real reason. So although Mars gives very good energy in the first house, it gives this sense of, uh, you know, like agitation, like I mentioned. So my guidance is to have uh, a very good physical exercise regimen to control this Mars energy. Not only will it control or combat this, um, you know, feeling of restlessness, it also combats the sluggishness that a retrograde Saturn is having in the sixth house for Virgos. So Virgo has a Saturn in the sixth house that's making them very sluggish or is giving them a sense of lethargy that's not wanting them to work or doesn't feel like working. It's also impacting their digestion. Now Saturn in the sixth house gives great immunity. So Virgos had a lot of good immunity against all these infections and all those kind of inflammations but it's made them very sluggish. So having a good physical exercise regimen is actually very beneficial at this time. So this month, the guidance is to make sure that you manage your anger, ego uh, with the, uh, within your household and as well as with your spouse, because both Mars and Sun are going to be aspecting the seventh house of marriage. And so Mars and Sun are uh, the anger and ego together. So make sure your communication is positive and very understanding of the other person's situation and within the domestic environment. So control your anger or ego if it does come into play. This month is also a very positive month for increasing your social contacts or your professional network because Venus is in the 11th house. So if you want to expand all your social circle, professional networks, by all means, reach into people and take that advantage. And that will really be very positive for you in the long run. Libra for September. Libra, your ascendant ruler Venus is retrograde in the 10th house of career. So Libra is going to be very focused on career and finance throughout the next couple of months. This is actually a positive month for career as long as you're maintaining good relationships at work. But the better news is that Mercury is in the 11th house of gains. So this could be a very favorable month in terms of financial gains and income. The first half is uh, much better when the sun is in the 11th house as well. So it gives you an amazing recognition and popularity within your professional network, as well as your social circle. Chances of promotion recognition by your bosses at work are very high. So make sure you're at your best um, as far as work performance and presentation is concerned. Make sure you make no errors. You're always looking your best and always doing your best. Uh, remember you're being noticed understand that so some libras may also get uh, new job opportunities um, if you don't get new job opportunities but would you you would like some it's a very good idea for you to reach into your social network or group of friends or professional network and ask for some support and help in getting those opportunities you'll be amazed at how much help you'll get this time Mars in the 12th house is aspecting the third house. So there is the possibility of all kinds of travel. And also the third house is your sibling. So there may be a relationship with siblings could become very important or intensified at this time. Um, although this is a financially, um, it's a very positive month. There will also be expenses that come up um, and those expenses, uh, expenses could relate to travel. Or they could be some family-related expenses and items that uh, come up during this time. 
to manage the uh, up and down between uh, in finance so there's good income but there's you know like i said some expenses coming up so do your best to manage that up and down of finances um, your health is very good this month due to mars aspecting the sixth house so um it gives very good energy to recover from any past health issues if you were experiencing them so it's uh, good recovery energy this month nothing to be concerned about as far as your health is concerned um, now relationships um, that's the one guidance that you really need to pay attention to uh, you need to be very cautious about your marital as well as uh, love relationship uh, due to the Mars aspect. So control your tendency to lose your temper or start arguments and fights with your spouse and family. So when Mars gets involved in it or aspects it, it has a tendency to start arguments, be very combative in nature. And Mars is also your ruler of your communication. So you need to be very uh, watchful of your communication at this time because it is aspecting the house of marriage as well. So be very, very watchful. Be very understanding. Don't be bossy. Don't tell your spouse what to do. And don't start an argument just because you want to start an argument. You know, be very understanding, like I said, and refrain from starting arguments. Um, Saturn is already in the fifth house, so it's aspecting your relationship with your children as well. It's impacting it, I should say. So don't start arguments with your children, with your spouse, and everybody concerned. So, um, and be understanding of it. Understand that Mars can damage relationships very quickly too. They could burn the relationship. So be very watchful of relationships this month. This is a very favorable month to do financial planning, investments for the future. Uh, think through things carefully, ask the experts, get expert advice, but it's a very favorable time to manage finances for the future. Scorpio for September. Scorpio, your ascendant ruler Mars is most favorably placed in the 11th house of gains and also uh, after mid-month the sun will join it in the 11th house. 11th house is gains, material desires, wish fulfillment. So this means positive developments in your career as well as excellent financial gains and income. Now in your career, if you are waiting for some recognition or promotions, this might be the month that you finally uh, get the rewards of your prior hard work. Um, some Scorpios may get new uh, business or job opportunities um, that are very financially rewarding. Now, but those Scorpios that are actually looking for new uh, opportunities or are looking for a new job, uh, but they didn't get it, this is an excellent time for you to reach out to your professional network or your social group and ask for their help in you know assisting you in trying to get a new job or any uh, business opportunities. Yeah, you will likely get a lot of support because the 11th house is very active right now. The 11th house denotes social circle, professional circles. So make sure you use this time wisely. So if you need, like I said, any assistance, uh, make sure you reach into that um, group of professional network, social circle, ask for all kinds of assistance, whatever you need. It's also a month of socializing and expanding your, like I said, social professional network. You get lots of visibility in those groups and respect in those groups. Those individuals that are working with overseas foreign companies, foreign entities, uh, or have any line of work with um, such entities like foreign entities, this is a very profitable time for um, those kind of ventures. Now, I know I said that this is a very good uh, month for gains, uh, but there's also a flip side to that and that the, the expenses could get very high this month. The loan and debt situation could get higher before you realize it. So make sure you're um, managing your finances really well. Otherwise, your expenses could get out of control very quickly and the debt situation, credit card debt could get out of control very quickly. Speaking about your health, you may be prone to some stress, mental tension because uh, Ketu or South Node is in the 12th house. So that might cause some headaches and some sleep issues. So um, one of the other things is that you might be concerned about your parents' health at this time as well. And then there could be some expenses relating to that as well. So again, I'm mentioning, you know, manage your expenses well, finance as well. The other major guidance I have is regarding relationships. 
retrograde saturn is in the fourth house so the fourth house is your mental peace domestic happiness and so that might be compromised just a little bit and maybe causing a loss of interest in the love life sense of detachment from your partner do your best to maintain the love and bonding you know this saturn is going to be there for a very long time so do your best with whatever you can to maintain the love and bonding relationship the placement of Rahu Jupiter in the sixth house is, uh, can actually be damaging to the relationship. So do whatever you can to maintain the love, understanding and, you know, uh, the bond within your marriage and relationship. And as far as uh, students are concerned, I think there's um, a bit of a lack of focus and very distracted. So do what you can to maintain that interest going there's a possibility of lack of clarity or confusion on what line of study to follow. So my guidance would be to, you know, go to a, a counselor or a coach and get some guidance from that person, get some help through a mentor to so you follow the right path because Jupiter is with Rahu and that kind of gives some confusion. So work hard, find the right path and stick with it. But right now it's showing a little bit of um, lack of clarity and, and some confusion. Sagittarius. For September, Sagittarius, your ascendant ruler, Jupiter, is in the fifth house and it aspects the first house. So that's considered a blessing for, on you. It also aspects the ninth house of luck, your guru and your dharma. So it activates your luck factor as well. Now this month, there's a lot of activity in your tenth house of career and ninth house of luck. So it's a very positive month in terms of career. Luck will be on your side and after mid-month, you have a good chance of being noticed by the seniors in your workplace. You may get what you have waited uh, so patiently for in your career. The only guidance I have regarding your career is to manage your attitude and manner of communication in the workplace because Mars in the 10th house may give you a combative approach with others that may ruin your prospects. On the other hand, um, Mars may also give you the ability to come up with new ideas and creativity at work that gets you very appreciated so use this energy very wisely definitely refrain from starting arguments and discussions in the workplace and because um, once you start that you start arguments and all this uh, it could probably end badly for you so again use the energy of mars uh, in the 10th house very wisely um Although financially this month, maybe, um, it, you know, it's kind of status quo, um, you know, just more of the same that's going on, nothing good, nothing bad. The only thing I can say is that if you were waiting on some unearned gains, like insurance uh, settlements or inheritance settlements, also any settlements from the government, then this month looks very promising for those kind of items. As far as health is concerned for Sagittarius, nothing serious is going on. Um, again, Jupiter is in the fifth house and it gives very good recovery from anything health related. But because Venus is in the eighth house, some of you may have skin related issues or eye related issues because it aspects the second house. So take good care of your eyes and if you have the tendency to have uh, dry skin or eczema, it might flare up at this time. But it's certainly nothing serious. Relationships look very promising um, overall and they have been for Sagittarius for a while uh, because of the presence of Jupiter in the fifth house. So love relationships look good. Relationship with children very promising as well. And also um, relationship with the marriage are also looking very promising. So uh, overall Sagittarius this is a good month um, as far as career and relationships are concerned money finance is so so nothing nothing bad or good you know just kind of okay for students I've mentioned this before I'll say it again Jupiter being in the fifth house is possibly the best placement ever for students uh, as far as focus performance energy uh, is concerned so uh, students will do really well just one little thing I'll point out is Saturn retrograde in the third house may cause some uh, conflict or disturbance with uh, siblings or neighbors because it's retrograde so they may bring up old issues start a little bit of a, of a disturbance or a conflict so kind of stay away from that you know make sure you understand what they're coming from and kind of you know uh, manage through that but it's such a small issue it's it's not a, it's not a really big thing 
um, because Mars is no longer aspecting it. So overall, um, Sagittarius is actually enjoying a pretty good positive time because of the presence of their Ascendant Lord Jupiter being in such a positive house at the fifth house. And this period actually continues for a while. So good luck, have fun, and um, nothing to be concerned about. Capricorn for September. Capricorn, your Ascendant Lord Saturn is in the second house of finance and family. And it's also retrograde coupled with the Jupiter-Rahu uh, conjunction in the fourth house. The fourth house uh, represents domestic happiness, mental peace. And so this is giving you lots of responsibilities and burdens also. And Capricorn is usually a very hardworking sign and always the most responsible ones in any family. And so really these transits are giving um, Capricorn all kinds of mental worries and tensions uh, related to family responsibilities and burdens. Now, as, so as far as career is concerned in September, uh, they're continuing to work hard, but I think the rewards and recognition are going to be slow to come. So not right now, but maybe in the next few months. Uh, some Capricorns are uh, quite dissatisfied with their careers or their jobs and have either already gone through a job change uh, already in the last year or uh, since last year or will go through one this year. And that's what Ketu in the 10th house does. It, it creates a sense of um, disinterest or dissatisfaction uh, with the career. And so it, also, it wants to do a transformation, you know, it, it do something different. That's what Ketu in the 10th house causes. And so that's what Capricorn has been going through since last year, where they're not interested in what they're doing. They don't like what they're doing in their careers. And now they wanted a change. And financially, uh, their luck may start to improve also uh, this month because Mars is activating their ninth house now. And ninth house, a house of luck. And also this may cause some Capricorns may have to go through a relocation or a... Uh, uh, may have already spent a lot of time away from their home as well because of work-related re or responsibility-related reasons. Um, also, uh, they may have this relocation because of career as well. Uh, they may have already done this uh, in the past few months, or they may do this not just in September, but in the next few months as well. Now, this month may also bring some travels for Capricorn because all the travel houses are getting activated. So I think Capricorn, a lot of Capricorn people will have very pleasant travels this month. As far as health is concerned, uh, Capricorn has been a little stressed, but September brings a very good recovery energy. And so the ninth house activation, which again is the house of luck, may bring some peace of mind and happier times as well. Um, the ongoing concern that Capricorn has had is uh, the health of the mother because Rahu-Jupiter conjunction in the fourth house uh, continues to have some stress around the fourth house, which could be the health of the mother. And the good news also this month is that relationships uh, tend to start improving as well, especially with the spouse, because Venus is in the seventh house of marriage, and that's a very positive transit. So um, I think a lot of Capricorns might spend very good quality time, happy moments with their spouse, which is definitely very, um, you know, contributes to improvement in the relationship with the spouse. So I think that's a very, very positive transit for Capricorn in improving their relationships with them within the marriage. The only one guidance or caution I'm going to put out for Capricorn is how to manage their money financial planning. Mercury is in the eighth house, so some, you have to be very careful about how you manage your money or do any financial planning. You know, don't do any risky financial planning at this time. Nothing serious. Just, just don't do any long-term financial planning without thinking through it. Aquarius for September. Aquarius, your ascendant ruler Saturn, has been in your ascendant house since the beginning of the year. And this has really impacted you at a physical and mental level as well. Physically, Aquarius has been um, weak, tired, and very low on energy. And mentally, they feel burdened with responsibilities and worries regarding relationships. Speaking of career and profession, 
Aquarius may be feeling lack of satisfaction um, because of uh, the lack of rewards of their hard work. But this month, Mars in their eighth house may trigger some kind of transformation in their career and profession. Some Aquarians uh, may make uh, changes. Now, these uh, could be job changes or these could be a profession change as well. It could be complete transformation as far as career or profession is concerned. Now, change is good as long as they think through these things and it's not impulsive or rash because Mars does sometimes tend to, you know, make rash decisions. So make sure if you're doing any changes, they're good, but just kind of think through it. Take a few minutes to think through things. But certainly Aquarius is facing tough competition and challenges at work. And this may be a uh, where uh, the month where some important changes do take place because I think some Aquarians is just probably fed up of the fact that they haven't had results, they haven't had rewards, and they're just not generally feeling well. Saturn in the first house makes a person not feel very energetic and it just has loses interest in doing a lot of new things. Now, from a financial standpoint, expenses are going to be high, so they may need to control their tendency to spend without planning or thinking. Again, Mars in the 8th house is, you know, can bring on sudden expenses as well. Whereas income is status quo. It's neither up nor down and thus really nothing wrong with it. But expenses may get higher and out of control. As far as health is concerned, I've already kind of mentioned that health is challenged because of Saturn being in the 1st house. They could experience back and shoulder pain specifically, as well as general muscle and body aches um, and including some stiffness in the legs that happens as well now this month their digestion may also become very sluggish as well because the sixth house gets activated because of venus especially when it's in the retrograde phase so um you know health is challenged as well so i'm so sorry that aquarius i just have like nothing good to say and i'm really sorry about that um, relationships are going to be a burden they have been a burden to aquarius and this month is the same thing because uh, and the problem is that a lot of people have a lot of expectations from Aquarians. Aquarians are very helpful people. So people just keep expecting from them. And when they're not feeling well or they're just so tired, they're unable to fulfill those expectations or reciprocate any feelings of love or tenderness. That's the last thing on their minds right now. Saturn in the first house certainly does not think of love, but so that's when it gets challenging and then mars in the eighth house you know creates obstacles and then when the sun moves into the eighth house as well it, that's going to be a bit of an issue too so a lot of activation of the sixth and eighth house so it's going to be challenging for relationships um, as well so just kind of watch your communication that's all i can say try to be as loving as possible and uh, definitely within the marriage, I think you should avoid conflicts, fighting, you know, try to control ang anger and ego because that could be a problem as well. So I apologize. I have not said one good thing for Aquarius, but unfortunately, you know, the planetary transits for Aquarius are all around the sixth and the eighth house. And so it's going to be a challenging month, but I promise you next month will be better. So good luck and don't worry too much about it. Pisces for September. Pisces, your ascendant ruler Jupiter will be going retro this month, um, early on in the month. So it's in and it's in the second house of finance, family, and also your speech. So this is the month where you will be focusing on all these three very important aspects of your life. So make sure that you keep your attitude very positive in terms of family relationships and avoid getting into any kind of conflicts with them, especially related to financial matters. And this also applies actually sometime starting in August. Now, as far as your career is concerned, there could be some ups and downs. So stay in touch with what's going on around you at work. And if you are a business owner, be very aware of the competition so you're able to handle whatever happens in your career very quickly. Now, for people that are involved with um, foreign or overseas entities, this could be a very profitable time. So if you're one of those businesses or if you're a person that's thinking about expanding your line of work or working with a company that's overseas, then it's a very good time for that. It's a very profitable time for that. It's good for that. It's possible that some Pisces may have even a need to travel long distance for work purposes this month.
Um, this is also possible that some Pisces will have relocated for work reasons either already or will along the lines sometime in the future as long as Saturn is in the 12th house. So this is for a long time. So that may occur for some Pisces people. Now, this month, my guidance is that you manage your communication with your co-workers very well because Mercury and Sun in the sixth house can damage relationships if you're not careful with your words. I've already said Mercury is retrograde, so sometimes causes misunderstandings. If you're not careful about what you're saying to people or how you're saying to people, it can cause, like I said, misunderstandings. One other impact of Mercury in the sixth house is that it may uh, make you make some errors or produce inaccurate work in the workplace so double check your work when if especially if you're working a lot of detailed numbers those kind of work or actually any work make sure you double check everything and don't make errors especially during the mercury retrograde phase which is till mid-september now financially um this month is extremely expensive and you may be spending on home related items or even health matters so don't spend impulsively or you may actually end up with huge credit card bills watch your financial you know matters very carefully um, and spend very cautiously i have good news for pisces and that is that love relationships may be very positive this month venus is in the fifth house of love and fun so lots of you may be having lots of fun and but if you're single and you may find that special partner in fact this is a good month for that um in fact, someone from your past may even come back in your life because Venus is retrograde. So looking for somebody that might be the month, make sure you go out, look for people or reach back into people that you knew in the past. Um, relationship with children, very pleasant as well, because the fifth house denotes that as well. Um, students, uh, you may get very distracted by the fun things that you're doing and lose focus on your studies. So make sure you spend enough time doing what you're supposed to do for your studies and your educational purpose. Otherwise, you may get very distracted having a lot of fun. As far as health is concerned, the only thing that I'm going to say is you need to be very careful about what you are eating. Otherwise, you may end up with some digestive issues. The sixth house is quite active. So take very good care of your health this month. Don't eat, don't take chances with the food that you eat, eat very healthy. Also might not be a bad idea to have a very good physical exercise regimen. That's always a very good uh, remedy for the sixth house when there's lots of planets in the sixth house. With this, I come to the end of my video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I wish everybody has a wonderful month. I will see you on one of my next videos. Goodbye for now.